Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. I'm, I'm guessing my math is going to be incorrect, so if you're listening to this, oh. ah, a very real lifey edition of the Real Life Podcast. Um, everyone's at home. This feels like a pandemic y edition of the podcast, but you know. For well, more reasons than one, Tyler. Reason it is. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it a pandemic y issue uh, episode? Did you talk about that, Bagno? Yo, you posted about it, right? Oh, I talked about it on Better Late Than Ever yesterday, yeah. Oh, yeah. How you feeling, big guy? Fine. Well, snotty. Congested. Uh, my brain is leaking out of all holes, is what gross. it feels like today. Really gross. It's gross. It's gross. So I'm at home. I'm in my basement. I don't want to infect anybody. Um, I was feeling fine. Well, we both were, because we did uh, shows on Monday. Oh, yeah, we were around Chalmers on Monday. Um, yeah, and I felt fine Monday. Yeah. Uh, Felt fine Tuesday, yeah, and then Tuesday. yesterday, I just kind of... Tuesday night during the Oilers game, I started to get a headache. I was just like, oh, whatever. Maybe I didn't drink any water or whatever my mom would probably tell me to do. And then the next morning, just out of caution, I decided to test and came back positive. So Abundance of caution? Abundance of caution. Abundance of caution. And it's heartbreaking because I had tickets to go to the Oilers game tonight, and now I'm not allowed to go, and I'm watching it like a Tier 2 fan. Boo! <laughs> Yeah, now, I, I, I don't know that I've had the vid, but I'm riddled with STDs. So I understand contracting disease. <laughs> uh-huh. It's never fun. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel like it feels like a pretty intense head cold for me at this stage. So all manageable, all good. Glad I'm vaccinated, but uh, I am ripping through Kleenex at the Castle Milk right now. Yeah, for a different reason than you usually rip through Kleenex. Am I right? Yeah. The, oh. they, no happy oh. tears today, Tyler. No happy tears today. Just snotty happy goo. tears. Is that what you call them? That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. um, but bag milk. I was in the <laughs> same boat as you. On. I went out on like again. I felt fine on Tuesday. Watched the Oilers game Tuesday. Uh, had a little late night curling on Tuesday as well. And then, as you do when you curl, you have six beers while you, you do get, it. Um, you get sick. You go to curling and get sick because that's where all the virus hangs out. No, I go to cur- I went to curling, crushed a bunch of beers, woke up the next morning and was like, oh God, I feel like shit. I should not have had that many beers last night. And then as you know, I kind of got up and started moving around, I was like, oh, this isn't just like a hangover. And then I got your text being like, I have COVID. And I was like, oh my God, we spent a week together. So both of us. Yeah. Are it. We uh, spent a lot of time together over the last handful of days. So best of luck to you, sir. I knew those Calgary kisses would come back to haunt us. It's always worth. There the were so many over the weekend. I, we forgot to unpack that. The amount of making out you two had. <laughs> Good yep. gravy. My tongue belongs in Tyler's mouth. Is what Tyler Good decided. God. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Tyler decided. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway. how was the game? <laughs> the well, play- outside of the saddle dome being a complete dump, fantastic. What were the highlights of its decline? You know what? I'm going to give it props for one second, and it's not the structure of the Saddle Dome. It's no, I already know the what you're service. Yeah. yeah. The burger? Just what they give to their customers in, you know, we had those coupons where you got a burger. Yeah, but that's you could a have special a free glizzy. package. That's a special, like, we got, we, like, that was a special ATV package that came with all these passes. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's, like, uh, like an off-the-shelf thing, but, like, we had these free things to get no, just get a pop, an ice cream, or sorry, a pop, a popcorn, a malt, which is supposed to be legendary in the Saddle Dome, and a burger. And I got the burger, and I was, I was thoroughly impressed with it. We had dinner at the Saddle Dome, and I was, I was impressed. And, and that's the only props I'll ever give that place. I assume the burger is named after whoever is president of the Calgary Flames. Yeah, it was the Murray <laughs> Edwards uh, smash burger. Delicious. <laughs> you mean all 32 teams don't mm. name burgers after executives? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things, right? Yeah. I have, like, pushed that out of my memory bank that that exists. But how embarrassing of a look that that's like an Oilers thing. Bad. How dare you, sir? I was enjoying a Chris Luna poutine the other day. It was the imaginary <laughs> GM of the Penguins. It was delicious. <laughs> ah, shit. That I is like true. that they have that because it means somebody was pitching Nicholson was like, to sweeten the deal. I think it's so embarrassing. <laughs> well, like, what, what about I- a Ryan Reynolds screamer? See, that I can get behind. I think this is going to happen, and I think it's going to be the best thing that happened to the NHL in the last 10 years. 
I agree. Oh, they're just salivating. This is all by design. It's happening. A hundred percent it is because no name, not no name, but like nameless bankers want front men for this type of shit. And when you're talking this amount of money, it's out of the realm of people being able to afford teams now. And it's like Mm -hmm. consortiums of people. And Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively are the absolute best people for the job. They just need to cut in. They just got to give a small little slice to Danny Alfredson. And, really? And then I think I, I think so. I because he's just such a he's such a loved uh, senator. So I think the three of them being your front men, I think you yeah. all and you move that arena uh, actually into Ottawa. Yeah, you've got a home run. You've taken something that they'll buy for seven hundred million, and you've made it over a billion. Like yeah. Bank. If you get Blake Lively to come to an Ottawa arena relocation committee meeting at city hall mm-hmm. and Blake Lively shows up, she's like, I think we should move the arena. They're going to be like, it's unanimous. The Blake Lively arena is now here. Uh, Today on daily face off live. We, uh, our inbox question was who is your dream celebrity NHL owner? Who's one celebrity you'd love to see by a team for the, by the Oilers or by yeah, anyone anything. Oilers, anyone who cares. I feel like Shaq should own a team. Yeah, Weird Al too, you know? Nobody's I'd thinking about him. 45-year-old Connor owned part of the Oilers. Oh, maybe. Because he's like, I've been here my whole life. I'm not moving my fucking geothermal driveway. I said not hockey, but it sounds like Bezos wants to buy an NFL team. Yeah. Obama might be a part owner of the Phoenix Suns. Did you see that? I did not. There's like a rich consortium being put together, and he was included in some of the meetings. Weird. Interesting. Ryan Reynolds has brands too. Like he can oh. advertise aviation gin at the game and break. He's, he's, mar- he's got his marketing company. Like he's like, he's, he's so clever with his campaigns. Uh, he is already in the professional team ownership uh, space and knows like they had a plan buying that team and they're obviously leveraging that plan and they're going to get their, their money back plus, plus, plus by buying Wrexham. And this, the same opportunity on steroids presents itself here for uh, uh, for Ottawa. So you're right. Private equity would be just salivating to be dying. the ones that back him. They'd back in the day, for it. back in the day when Lemieux wanted to buy the Penguins, which is, I think, an even crazier move than his entire career, which was crazy enough. He went to uh, Ron Burkle, who's like this famed private equity guy. And said, like, I'm Mario Lemieux, and I want to buy the team. And he was like, well, who the hell is Mario Lemieux? And he explained who he was. Ron Burgle didn't know the first thing about hockey. But he understood that a guy like Mario Lemieux is like a transformative face of that. He's the exact perfect guy to own the team, right? And I feel like Ryan Reynolds, famed Canadian, global guy, couldn't be more famous on a global platform. It's the exact same thing. And there's Ron Burkles out there that are like, what's the fucking value of the team? And you're like, it's the 25th most valuable team. Well, if you can just bring it up to average, there's a ton of money to be made. And what's your qualifications again? Oh, I'm Ryan Reynolds. I'm Van Wilder. I'm also a marketing genius. And I'm also a famous Canadian. Well, and also the thing that I love about the idea is if Ryan Reynolds does get the team, he's probably going to make some pretty cool content with it too. Cause that welcome to Wrexham. 100%. That welcome to Wrexham show, but his soccer team over in that whatever league it is. And it's, there's a lot of good shit on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. It'd be way better. Can you believe Van Wilder is this big? It'd be like Will Ferrell trying to buy the Patriots. How many tickets he probably could. He probably could in this in the sense of if you follow the path of Reynolds. That Reynolds is really smart. Yes, man, super smart. Like he is super smart. So like like you follow him on his path. Yes, actor. Yes, he's Van Wilder. Yes, he's Deadpool. But like all the activities he does outside of that, and the brands he he builds, and the content he builds, like he is a legitimate brand. Yeah. Uh, so he will he will he will he, yeah. It's it's a home. If I'm a send fan right now, I'm I'm doing cartwheels. Think how many tickets they're going to sell if he props down from the roof as Deadpool in the home opener. Come on. If I'm the Melnick yeah. twins, I don't sell 100%. I sell 80%, and I stay on so I can hang out 100%. with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, so you can attend the board meetings with Brian and, and Blake. Just like Dad would have wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're still involved, and you can see Blake Lively and be like, 
girl, what tone color is that for your ear makeup or whatever girls say to each other? And they'll sell to, they'll sell today and they'll re, they'll maintain a 20% stake. And in five to eight years, that 20% stake will be worth the same amount that they sold the 80% for. Yeah. And you get to hang out with Van Wilder. Well, exactly. You get you get to reenact Van Wilder one through infinity as much as you I, want because Brian. I can just see him wearing glasses and a suit, cheering in the box. I'm a Sens fan. Let's do this. Uh, well, it must just be lighting Van, like Canucks fans up, uh, just because he is a a passionate uh, Vancouverite. But this I think this me is that... a Canadiana enough thing. Sorry, bag milk. I think this is enough of a buying the Senators as an act of being a Canadian that he won't take that much heat. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. He's doing it more so for the for the country. But you know, people in Vancouver are a little pissy, so they they'll take some orders. Yeah, they riot so when they win. Upset. But that's all good. I'll become just, just yeah. I'll become a Sens fan just to piss off. Uh, well, sorry, I'm an Oilers fan first, but I'll I'll sympathize and respect the Sens to piss off Vancouver fans. Imagine being so famous that like Beckham being involved with Miami Major League Soccer, right? And now if like Ryan Reynolds is involved and granted, he's a big time businessman, but part of it's going to be go to the games and sit in the crowd and just you doing that, just you attending games will oh. move the needle on the popularity of the team. That's so crazy. Immediately. You see him in a sense Jersey in the arena and it's just going to fucking melt and they'll have a Deadpool Jersey. I'm sure. And there'll be all these other knickknacks and stuff that they'll build. It'll be wild. But speaking about Beckham, just because he's Beckham and he owns his team in Miami, he's about to do something really goddamn epic, and he's going to have Messi join his team. Are you serious? Yeah, that's that's he's the leaving uh... Paris Saint Germain. He's going to come to Inter Miami, and then that's going to make Miami the MLS team of Latin America. Well, wow. Argentina. Isn't that wild? Beckham's just like, yes, yes. Just walk it can't be long until next. Ronaldo leaves, too, because he's having all sorts of trouble. Well, I was going to ask, is Messi still Messi, or is he aging out now? I have no idea. I'm just asking. Well, he he's older. older. Like, him and Ronaldo are both older, but I think they're still performing. If um, you put like, them in they, the MLS, like, it'll de-age them, because they'll be so much better than the competition suddenly. It's, it's a different league, yeah. It's a different league. They'll be, they'll be stars in that league for sure. Imagine Messi comes over and then Ronaldo comes over on a different team and then it's Messi versus Ronaldo and that makes soccer even more popular now. Oh, yeah. Now imagine Ryan Reynolds owns the Senators. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God in heaven. It's can the you fucking imagine, metaverse. Can you imagine if the Blake Lively-Ryan Reynolds duo gets like, it becomes toxic. Blake Lively is like way too involved. She's like, Marching into the dressing room, being like, fuck you, Shane Pinto. Like, the power play sucks. God damn it, Blake, get out of here. We're naked, they'll say. <laughs> he has to tell Blake Lively to stay home, like uh, Mahomes had to tell his girlfriend to stay away. Yeah. He's like, hey, listen, Blake, you are way too into this. <laughs> <laughs> Every season ticket holder gets a shirtless picture of Ryan Reynolds, too. It's just going to move units. Yeah. <laughs> Every game it's so. almost like the, the amount that celebrity can affect viewership of shit. It's almost like worth it for teams to give celebrities courtside seats and shit just for the amount of impressions it generates. You know what I mean? Well, the Drake model with Toronto and the raps, right? Like he kind of made them cool. What do they say that Drake's buying a WNBA team? That's the rumor. It's because uh, there's a lot of people who think Toronto should have a WNBA team. I wonder what Drake's going to do next. Because he's 36, hey? He was just on Howard Stern the other day. I'm super excited to listen to an interview. What? Drake How was? do you listen to it? What do no. I need? A smart toaster? Uh, yep. How do I listen? Uh, I think you can also get on YouTube, can't you? Uh, probably a stolen version of it, yeah. So, did you... Bag Milk, so you're talking about the clip you saw, right? Uh, well, I saw a clip that he... And I also saw them promoting that he was going on there. So, they're... Drake's marketing with 21 Savage for their new album that drops tonight at 10 o'clock. They I'm ready. They faked a bunch of this. So there's like an edition of Vogue that they just made an entire fake edition of Vogue and pretended they were on there. They pretended they were on the NPR tiny desk. They put out these fake Howard Stern clips where they're just making up answers. Did to I get can- bamboozled? You got bamboozled, I think. Damn He's it. not on Howard Stern? I was super excited about that because Howard Stern like... I thought it would have been a great interview. So they when I saw the post on, on Howard Stern, but weren't doing any of it, that's genius. Well, fuck Drake for that. 
I was looking How forward dare to a good you, interview. Sir? How no, dare I just you. said it. The world where I'm, everything's the same, that's brand new. I, I appreciate a solid liar, I guess. It's like when he shaved the heart into his hair. Brand new. I was looking forward to the interview. I was legitimately excited to see him talk to Howard Stern for like 90 minutes. I know. So, so to I. find out that this is fake is heartbreaking to me. It's, uh, I'm yeah. really excited for this album. But it's a genius piece of marketing. Like, don't actually yes. go on these shows. Don't actually do Vogue. Just pretend Just you did. You Post did. it on the internet. Who gives a shit? You have more reach than if you actually went on Vogue by publishing a fake Vogue cover on your Insta. Yeah, I'm just I just Googled a Drake Howard Stern and it says, yes, you've been fooled by the Drake deep fake on Howard Stern. God <laughs> damn it. Uh, damn it all to hell. Uh, sorry, buddy. Uh, Fuck you, Drake. Can you imagine? Aubrey. If, can you imagine you're back I... to Aubrey for me today. <laughs> we'll be uh, friends again tomorrow after I listen yeah. to the album. But for now, you're Aubrey. Aubrey. You go. Yeah, you go to your corner, Aubrey. What do you think he'll do? Will he buy a team? Will yeah. he? Because you know he's got a master plan, and he's killed it in music. But what's he going to do next? I wonder. I get the NBA. Well, he should own a piece of the Raptors. Wow, you're not wrong. And yeah. make sure that hip hop always references the Raptors in its content. That's why uh, he shouted out Larry Tannenbaum in his one song on Larry King when he was on the Larry King show recently. No, <laughs> yeah, uh, deep fake. That was funny. But bagged milk, imagine if I never told you that. And like for the next two weeks, you're like, God, when's this interview dropping? No, I would have just gone to look on my serious account and I would have been like, what the fuck, where the fuck this is? And then I would have probably Googled and got slapped in the face by the internet. Like just happened to me live on this podcast. Oh, oh yeah. Damn it, Aubrey. BM, you mentioned. Uh, he should go on Howard Stern though, for real. That'd be a good interview. Yeah, he should. He should on the Raptors. Yeah. Or think about the acting roles he's turned down because he's such a good actor and his videos are legitimately like television grade content, right? Yeah. And movie grade content. He's probably turned down insane offers to do movies. Since Drake broke in music, he's done no content whatsoever in TV or movie. He was in Anchorman 2 for eight seconds. Yeah. Oh, he sure was. Maybe I wonder if he'll do like a Will Smith and suddenly Drake's in like the number one movie five summers in a row. I feel Probably. like he's, I don't know. He could. You're not a Drake believer, are you? Here I'm trying. Not in that side of him. I don't think he'll Drake ever go is back very to be talented. an actor. His videos are very funny. He could be a comedian on a movie for sure. For sure. Probably, yeah. We'll even go look at him do the acting in the Howard Stern thing, right? Like it's good. Like it's funny. <laughs> Damn it, Tyler. It's believable. <laughs> Uh, I love me the stern dog, so this one hurts. This one cuts deep. BM and very rarely are you bamboozled, which is what I'm where I'm getting the most yeah. joy in this. You know what? I'm gonna tell you that my brain is not running on all cylinders today. I wrote the GDB for Oilers Nation. Bless the Oilers, five game winning streak going up against the New Jersey Devils. Super excited about it. But it took me, I'm gonna say double the time that it normally would for such an article. Yeah, I was on uh, I was on Owen every day with Tyler Ramchuk. I don't know if you heard of it. Um, oh, bravo! The game day show. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Tyler was a little over the top bullish on the Devils. I'm just gonna say, I also like bagged milk. That show felt like it took an hour to pull off. I was just exhausted. Um, but I mean, I'm bullish on the Devils because they're like really, really good. Dave, so. I've got some of this fresh off the top of my mind in their last four games that they've won. They have outscored the opposition 19 to five and they're giving up like 21 shots a night. The devils are rolling right now. Wild. BM, my, my key to victory tonight was everyone's talking about, Oh, like the devils play with structure and like, you got to recognize that you have to respect that. I say, boo, I say you just play with max chaos and try to throw off the devils as much as you possibly can. Who's it's Max Chaos? Way. That new defenseman from the OHL. Exactly. Thank you. It's just a state of being around here. Yeah, I, I probably I haven't watched enough Devils games to even understand why they're working so well right now. But when I was looking at the numbers today, I was just like, whoa, this is a big challenge against. And you know what? When you got a young team and they've got a little bit of chutzpah and some confidence, they can be dangerous. So the others are gonna have to be careful. They got Max Powers yeah. playing the power play. 
Well, I was reading a uh, Vanity Fair article about uh, the New Jersey Devils yesterday and uh, how they're getting uh, so many shots and not uh, allowing so many shots against. So it's really getting some range. It makes you wonder if you had deep fake technology and you just made up fake clips of a fake junior player and put them out. Like, you know, you're like so here it is for the Sycamore Moose. And they're like, that's not even a real team. You're like, isn't it though? Here's the goal he scored. So do we not find this disturbing that they could go and create all this stuff? Cause like, isn't this like the epitome of fake news? It's like when movies when the president, the real president is in the movie. What movie was Clinton talking about aliens in the movie? I don't know. It's very disturbing. I think, uh, fuck. There was like a big budget well, Mars movie. attacks. No, no, like a real disaster <laughs> movie from 2005 to 2012. Somewhere in that range, there was a disaster movie, and Clinton's in the movie talking about aliens in real life, but they, like, took it out of context and put it in the movie from when we're being attacked by aliens. And they had Clinton saying it. And I found it very alarming then. It was, like, very jarring that it was all lies. It's the same thing now. You yeah. can't trust what you see. Look, they're on Larry King. No, they're not. You don't know what the fuck you're seeing anymore. Yeah, I completely, again, I fully, I fully fell for it. I was excited about that interview that does not exist. I thought this was going to be like the situation where the queen went on James Bond, you know? That actually was happened. real. It actually it happened. Wasn't. I don't know anymore. I don't What's know. No, it real. wasn't. Nothing real. The love of Blake of Lively. 2012 That's London real. Olympics. We're all in a simulation. What is real? Well, are we like are we not like it's like i don't know I, i'm kind of off top by that approach because like now like there's there, and it, it, it's just an example of there's so much of this stuff going on so he's aubrey to you too that's what it sounds like to me well yeah i put him in i put aubrey in a corner right now he's on time mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. if drake put himself in a movie and then was like gonna promote the movie on his social media maybe he's the first 50 million dollar movie star Maybe Drake can create a situation where he was a genie named Shazam. <laughs> Seriously, you know the offers he must be getting from major motion picture companies? They're like, Drake equals popular, movies equal question mark? God damn, Drake. But he's got to be careful, though, because then he could end up in a shitty movie like Harry Styles just did. No, he'd have the pick of the litter. He would have the pick of the litter of scripts. Have you seen how Mr. Beast got all these cash offers for his shit? Yeah. I heard that and he turned down a Billy for his, his YouTube channels. And then he took on a billion five of investment or worth a billion five or some shit. I saw some thing where they're breaking it down. They figured that he's made over $800 million in YouTube revenue. <laughs> Lifetime. He, he said on a pod I listened to the other day, he's making six figures a day just from Walmart in terms of, uh, his, his chocolates, yeah, his chocolates, his beastables, or whatever. And then he takes all of his content and makes internationalized versions of it with properly overdubbed yeah. narration. Super smart. And all those uh, channels in aggregate is like a multiple of his English channel one. And yeah, all he has to pay for is translation. I love that idea. It was super smart. Senior beast. Yeah, he's not Mister. He is uh, senior, or he's gonna have <laughs> to be upgraded. Yeah, but them them dollars still pay. Fuck yeah, they do. I I and he makes good content. Like I I really my problem with Mister Beast is that he doesn't put out enough. But that's the thing is he's like the work that goes into it. It's like a Holy motion God. picture worth of work. There was oh, that yeah. one where it took like three months to produce, and the guy ended up winning a half million some for staying in that house. It's just really good content that he's putting out there. And again. YouTube is just there always. And it's the best. I love YouTube so much. They were working it out that like some of, they were just picking random videos off of different pages of thumbnails and working it out. It was like between like 15 and 50 million per video Damn. in revenue off of like, put your hand on a Tesla. Yeah. Remarkable. Well, it's like they took the old school radio contests a lot of time and they just, Jacked him up yep. by a thousand percent. Yeah. And then put it out. Yeah. You're right. And then he's got Mr. Beast Burger with all the ghost kitchens. So without having to actually build a restaurant, he got to open up like 1500 ghost locations of his restaurant. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not going to even look at offers 
to hand over the keys to my kingdom unless it's 15 billion is what he said. Jeez. Yeah, I saw, him, I saw him say that on Joe Rogan. He's pretty impressive for a dude that's only 24 years old. He that's went insane. on Joe Rogan? Yep. What the fuck? Oh, uh, man. Now it's on Spotify. I don't know. Yeah, I miss having it on YouTube, too. I used to just throw them up on the TV in the background. I try to stream it off my phone, but like every time it goes to commercial, it for some reason doesn't re-enter the show again. Mm. And I'm like, these are 2022 problems. And my robot butler's on the fritz again, and I threw it down a flight of stairs. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Uh, that's good. Uh, it's a big night tonight down at Roger's place. We're going to talk about that, uh, but first we're going to take a break for an ad. Episode Robot 400, yeah, episode 425 of the Real Life Podcast, as always, brought to you by DoorDash and Noodle Noodle, where you can use the promo code GAMEDAY25, get you 25% off and no delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app. Ding dong. Yes, Liam, ding dong indeed. Well done. I... Uh, Bag Milk, you talked about how you're sad you can't go to the game. I'm sad I'm not going to the game either because it's the first ever Oilers Hall of Fame induction. That is a shift, though. Did you see, like, the timeline of how things are, are progressing oh, tonight? No. It's a commitment. It is a commitment to be at Rogers Place tonight because doors open at 5. Puck drops not until 7.30. Oh, what? 7.30? Yep. yep. Holy you. cow, they've got what you What time does the show oh. start, the pregame? I'm not sure what is time that is. They say be in your seats for 5.45. So oh, oh, the ceremony oh, oh, starts at 6. I, I, oh, my God. This, this doesn't oh. bode well for the Oilers. That means they're oh. going to come out on the ice for 90 minutes. Oh, that was <laughs> Holy shit. I always yeah, I think just... of the time Glenn Sander had his retirement, and they started it off with him sitting in the media center, and then he had to walk all the way down while having a spotlight on him. That almost got forever. Was a crime against humanity. Took God, forever. He, he was exhausted walk all the way down. He was hey, an no. old man, for God's sakes. Yeah, just uh, Jack Michaels says he's on the call tonight. Seven twenty-eight puck drop. And I also remember to the Gregor- other, Sorry, I also remember the others being the guys that sent Gretzky out in his retirement, standing in the bed of a truck on the ice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen I'm that ever. Burn away though. Strapped to a ram, they said. The worst. <laughs> The worst for Gretzky was the opening ceremony in Vancouver. Oh, the Olympics. Where he's in the back of a truck and oh it's pouring God. outside. Oh. They did you dirty, Wayne. Oh, God. Uh, according to Gregor's, the game, notes to, the game notes today, if you are not going to Rogers Place, you can watch a condensed version of the ceremony, which will be starting at 7 p.m. on Sportsnet. On Oilers Plus. <laughs> Does anybody have Oilers Plus? No. We have a we have a company account actually. We do. Do we know what it's like? Is anybody watching it? Uh, Zach said there's probably more content up than you'd think, but ultimately, yeah, it needs to work. I am a great fan of the Edmonton Oilers. Tell me why I need to watch it. I don't have a reason for it. Really? There's no highlights. Oh, well, I mean, do you need to pay eight bucks a month to have highlights to an Oilers game? I don't think so. If you were like, oh, there's one where Connor does squat thrust in his home gym for 45 minutes, I'd be like, I'll be downloading that tomorrow morning. I have asked that. I also thought on an Oilers Plus, it just snowed that they could have done, um, you know, we could have watched the snow melt on Connor's driveway. That would have been nice. They should have released <laughs> Celeste Jardin's new movie, Picture Perfect, on Oilers Plus. There you go. See? I'd watch. We're already pitching content ideas. Gold. The making of a Bobby Nix burger, 12 part series. Oh. Farm table. It, yeah. Yep. The reason it costs so much is that it's one cow per burger. <laughs> they kill it live when you order. We've been growing Bobby Nix burgers on this here <laughs> farm for seven odd seasons. <laughs> it's very wasteful. <laughs> it's like an interesting analogy to pull from that, that burger angle you just played, bag milk. Yes. In terms of how they need a whole cow to make a burger, and mm-hmm. just see if there's, there's some kind of there's some kind of thing to make from that that I think is a good analogy of the upper echelon. Well, if you're going to make a burger named after an oiler, name it after Connor or somebody who's actually going to move the yeah. needle on sales. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then to wash it down with a fresh cold Bob beers. Yeah, like, the Mac, oh. da- yeah, the Mac Daddy, the Big Mac Daddy. 
Let's oh, go. We, come on. We went to a country in Eastern Soviet bloc and got a hundred li- trillion liters of vodka made. And now we're selling Darnell Nurse Vodka, trademark, and it's $31 a shot. Mm-hmm. I would line up and buy it. Oh, they'd be delicious. A Darnell Nurse Vodka and Soda, $63? Come exactly. On. And you get a special cup? Come on. Look at Mr. Beast. Why are people buying Mr. Beast burgers? Oh, you don't even get shit from Mr. Beast. Have you tried his burger? Yeah. I've been meaning to try it. It's fine, where, but it's not like... Going here? They didn't like helicopter in a different kind of beef from like Dash, Wadu bro. country. Oh, yeah, of course, DoorDash. DoorDash. Well, uh, as you guys know, I'm uh, kind of a prisoner in my house, so maybe I'll try one of the bo- Mr. Beast burgers this week. Plus, I know that they make it next to Chez Pierre, and I've had so many good times at Chez Pierre over the years, and having something that's cooked in the parking lot, I know I'm having a good quality uh, that's meal. That's so funny. I just noticed that for the first time on Sunday. I drove by, and I'm like, that's a ghost kitchen in the parking Pierre, lot of don't Chez Pierre. play around. Pierre makes money. He's going to get his money either way. Whether it's Mr. Only Beast sell or... Pop, so he's got to he's got to find other ways. Yeah, there's only so <laughs> many shows you can do. Man, I was downtown today at Manu Life Place. I have not been to that neck of the woods since before the troubles here. It's crazy how like <laughs> I saw like numerous concerned security team shooing people around. Every store shut. It's bizarre, man. Holy hell. Downtown, Downtown took it in the pills for the pandemic, so it, it'll they be the did. last to bounce back, but it's coming. Oh, it'll come. It's just a moment in time, right? Like, oh, I've been there and seen, I've seen the food court there. Like, you couldn't get a seat there if you tried. And then I was there today at, like, 12, 15, when you'd think it'd be, like, full swath of customers. There was, like, 20 people in there. It'll bounce back, though. It used to be a it's not like the people wait. died. They're just working funky home. pickle pizza. <laughs> What's that? Said it used to be a 30 minute wait to get a slice of funky pickle pizza down there. Oh, delish. I used to go to the what funky we need pickle to do. across from West Ed all the time. I think I heard a rumbling that funky pickles coming back. No. That would be sick. We got to get it the strip come clubs back. to come back. One per quadrant <laughs> of the city South, East, West, and North. Every quadrant needs a functioning strip club for Edmonton to bounce back. Put a funky pickle pizza in the parking lot. It's Makes a sense. sign of a healthy economy. It's called the strip club index. Mm-hmm. Yes. Back in the day, there was an ample industry. There were people who made their living selling hot dogs outside strip clubs. <laughs> they were outrageously priced, but Gordon knows I bought enough of them anyway. Talking about the uh, outside of strip club hot dogs, but moving the, the setting from uh, strip club to cowboys. <laughs> of they, had that little, they had that little kiosk, that little like hot there that always sold so hot busy. dogs. And so busy, and every time, but you're drunk, you're like, oh, yeah, the bacon bits. I want bacon bits on it. Well, they're not real bacon bits. They're those fake simulated ones. Yep. And every time I get, I'd eat it, I'd be like, well, I didn't get the bacon bits. <laughs> Next Thursday, a bunch of 25-cent drafts. Uh-huh. Bacon yeah. bits, please. And I'm like, oh, my God, I did it again. It'll that, be better this week. That guy's buying you the know. Senators with Ryan Reynolds now. <laughs> That's how you make money. You sell exactly. bacon bits at real bacon prices, but <laughs> simulate simulated bacon bits. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I put it up on a tee for someone here to talk about how much they love Ryan Smith on this Ryan Smith night, and no one took advantage of it. We're distracted by well, Ryan Reynolds. You got into the programming, and then we got kind of upset about the programming, and then we started talking about other things. Oh, yeah. It's... Ryan Smith is the reason this website exists. Correct. We all love Ryan Smith. (laughs) That is fully correct. Had Ryan Smith been treated equitably, none of this would exist right now. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Tyler? That's concerning. I wouldn't have a job. Shout out to Kevin Lowe. No, you'd be somewhere else. You'd be in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization or something. (laughs) Yeah. You'd be be locked on Oilers. Yeah. Living the dream. You'd still be at 1260. Can I get you a water, Mr. Gregor? <laughs> <laughs> then now you're like, pardon me. We're both on television with Frank Sarah. Get out of the way, Jason. Real media. Yeah, sorry, uh, Jason. The next generation is here. Uh, I'm happy for Lee Fogelin as well. Oh, I was saying on Owen every day with Tyler Yeramchuk. I, I think they absolutely... 
they right. absolutely, I think it was me today. Uh, <laughs> they absolutely nailed the first yeah. two entrants because yeah. you had to do Smitty because he bled orange and yeah. blue. Yep. But Lee Fogelin, like if you hear Wayne Gretzky talk about Lee Fogelin and how instrumental he was and how much of a warrior he was and like all those things, like you hear them just sing Lee Fogelin's praises, like the, yeah. the early 80s Oilers. I think they nailed it. And it's like a story that, hasn't really been told too much, like especially to like a younger generation. Like Lee Fogan's before, way before my time. I only knew him because he lived in the West End, and I grew up with his son. And like you did, you did a little bit of deep dive. But you didn't really know like the 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 man, the player that he is. And then you hear all these stories of him playing with a broken leg in the playoffs and shit. Like this guy, this guy battled hard for the Oilers. So I think they nail like you know. Give credit where credit's due. They may sell you a Bobby Nixberger, but they assembled a, a yeah. smart selection committee and they got it right on the first try. What is hey, the don't get me wrong. I've, I've enjoyed many of Bobby Nix. What's the frequency of the these? Nurse Patty. Jesus. <laughs> Probably once a year would be my guess. Because I, I was just cruising on Twitter today, just seeing what the vibes were like leading into the ceremony. And some people were just kind of thinking with like, they would have liked to see Smitty have their own, but maybe that's just a generational thing that, like you said, Jay, they don't know about Lee Fogelin enough. Yeah. They'll be, they should be released. 60 years old. It'll be like, Lee Fogelin is the man. Mm -hmm. They should release like a 60 minute documentary about each player as part of it. Uh, it should be on Oilers Plus. It should be, the, they should have done a little biopic or not biopic. You're right. Term, a little see, thing about Lee Fogelin. They should have they done like a 60 minute both. Yeah, if Oilers Plus leads to, like, awesome content and, like, documentary people working for the team now and making wicked shit, I'm all for it. If it leads Shane to the Fantasy press conferences... Oilers documentaries every year. Yes, every week. Hire Ken Burns, for Christ's sake. Ken Burns' Oilers documentary would be fly. Oh, they'd be deep. Adam Scorgi, really that's the, that guy that he does those in-depth ones. He should do a yep. series well, on the OL. Well. Yeah. He's, he, he just signed up. He's doing, he, uh, I just saw he announced he's doing another uh, documentary, and I can't – it's a crazy – it's a real big name, and I can't remember who it is. It must be real big if that's the case, but uh, my brain's also full of lots of <laughs> thoughts, so I forget things, but um, – on Oilers Plus, so they should be having they should be having like Vice style ten minute, fifteen minute documentaries on all of their players. I'd and watch they should all have of that. Like Nail Yakupov doing Russian Oilers content, and you know former Oilers speaking in Finnish and shit. Like bring back Yanni Ninema and give him a show. Talking to I've, Finns. I've heard rumblings that Yanni Ninema lives in Edmonton. What? Dremchuk? Is that true? I have no idea. Uh, let's he, hit he the streets. Always, he's played in that world's longest game a few times, I think. And I'm like, a guy just wouldn't fly here to like endure that kind of pain. I think I, I think I heard. Uh, I, I could be way out to lunch. I, you know, I've got my sources are really just myself and Amir, but uh, unbelievable. Uh, I swear I heard that. Once Go again, with your gut. It's possible. Yeah, anything is possible. If you took the trouble as the Oilers to make content in the different languages around the world where the players are from, using a known player from that country, it would do well. Hundred percent. It would be do the well. Man, you, man. I'm sure if you it's went to Manchester, to you'd be ever. like, "This place sucks," but I'm a Man U supporter. It's easier to do than ever. I mean, you own the bloody morning show down in Calgary. You're actually probably the guy to do this instead of the OEG. Uh, let's go. I'd watch a Yanni Ninema podcast in Finnish, not speaking a word of Finnish. There's your market research complete. Yeah. Tiki talk with Essa Tikkanen. Yeah. Every, every Wednesday morning at nine 30. The gambling partners are built in on both sides of the pond for this content. Larvinen, speaking of Finns, Larvinen went down to uh, Dallas because you know how he's connected to players. And the team, the team rolled out like the red carpet for him. Hey, what the fuck? Like, he's just like, Jay, he, he sent me a message like, Jay, I love Edmonton, but I might have, I might be becoming a Dallas fan. And they oh, shut up, Larvinen. I was like, 
Oh, uh, Edmonton still has his heart. This Edmontonian I, people of Dallas. I don't know what people of Dallas are called. Uh, Dallasites, Dallasers, Dall- Dalai. I don't know. They don't give a fuck who Larvin is. Larvinin's a big deal in Edmonton, and Edmonton loves Larvinin, so yes. that's why he loves the city. Yes. He it is no red carpet though, aside from us. Yes. It is. It is crucially important to embrace these types. Who's driving? I don't know right anybody now? else who has a fucking hot sauce RV though. Larvinin is one of one. Yes, and he's already doing the content with the Finnish Oilers. <laughs> The key to the growth of the fan base is to make the content in these other languages so that people in Finland are like, how do you become Oilers fan? Like, I don't know the player that's from 10 years ago that I've heard of that's famous on social media here said he's now doing a show about the Oilers and I watched it and there's no other Finnish content about the NHL despite it being filled with Finns. Then do only fans. <laughs> When was the first pro sports team launching OnlyFans? Well, OnlyFans, as the ads tell me all the time on YouTube for reasons I can't explain, isn't just pornography, Tyler. I know. It's also how to bake a cake and how to learn to rumba dance. So there you are, you yeah, it's a It's a sub stack for bloggers or for, for, for video creators. Yeah, but no one uses it for that. <laughs> How do you know? Says you. I'm, how I'm you there. The you pervert. Right? Yeah, I'm Just there. Just the other the day, art. I was learning how to braid bread. Mm-hmm. I'm there for the art. That's when you really start to have an interesting industry emerge where it's like useful home construction tips, but also the person's naked. <laughs> So you're like, I'm paying for OnlyFans, but I'm also getting excellent well, stock advice. Could be some content from Chalmers. Weather channel? Isn't it that weather channel that's nude weather channel? Uh, I would love to get my weather from a nude. We do Chalmers home tips, but he's just, you know, Buck he's naked. just nude. <laughs> sports center. His- okay. Sports center, but the people are naked would destroy sports center ratings now. Agreed. Disagree. Disagree. That's ridiculous. not the same people on sports center now naked. I mean, like, People you want to see naked, naked, but reading the same sports news as Sports Center. No, it's what's the point? A hundred to one viewership. A <laughs> hundred to one low end, Tyler. <laughs> low end. <laughs> low end. What? Nudity? I've been watching this show for 10 years and I can't find the damn Oilers highlights anywhere. I used to watch <laughs> Showcase for six hours hoping to see a blurry <laughs> boob. Uh, if I could get my Oilers highlights from a nude. <sighs> Tyler, put that on the idea board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Jay, again, you're probably the guy. Yanni Ninema, below that nude. Nation Plus is all nude. Yep. Oh, my God. Everyone I put just a photo. articles nude. Mm-hmm. I put a photo of Pavel Bure topless up on the Canucks Army Insta stories today. <laughs> and I must say, he was an invigoratingly good-looking man back in the day. My God in heaven. Very handsome. Absolutely. Very handsome. He is mm-hmm. aged like a, I don't even know. What does he do now? Isn't he like a GM of like Russian he's the head of the, Yeah, Women's Hockey Association in Russia. He's the head mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. All I knew is he owned Why a house on that island where Oprah lived. Did he? Yeah. Whenever I see how crazy Candace Cameron Bure is, I always wonder, what is bloody Valerie Bure up to to be with somebody like this this long? He is still, he crazy he like this? He still sees DJ Tanner. He still sees DJ Tanner. But, like, the Bure family used to be watchmakers for the czar, right? If you're that high up in Russian society and you're Pavel Bure, you're connected in all the different worlds if you catch my drift, Right. If you drop Candace Cameron in Moscow with her husband, Valerie Bure, I don't know what that looks like from <laughs> their perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But they've yeah, been together so long, she must have found a way to be like, I am super religious and DJ Tanner, but I've also met Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Tyler, I'm, cons- I'm curious why you're, uh, you're concerned about the hockey game tonight. Just because the Devils are really good and this whole idea of like it's a banner-ish night for the Oilers with Foglin and Smith 
They're going to have to sit on the bench for an hour and a half. The Oilers have won five in a row. A lot of shit's been going right over these games. Granted, the same could be said for the Devils. A lot's been going right for them, but they've been like just flat out dominating their opponents, and the Oilers really haven't been. So I just kind of look at it like, I don't know. at this point, I'm, I never go into a game being like, oh, the Oilers are going to lose this one for sure. But this is just one where I'm kind of more uneasy about it because of those factors. Well, I'm happy they beat Nashville, but I'd love to dig in, and I don't think it'll be any on any of the websites out there that are resource-based. What is the Oilers' record on a ceremony night? Oof. Oh, it can't be good. Well, actually, remember the last ceremony night would have been Kevin Lowe night. Oh, that was against the Rangers. The Rangers. That was when back. Connor did the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. yeah. But again, okay. they started like shit. Maybe, yeah. Yes, they would because they've been sitting on the bench idle with their legs bent over, not getting enough circulation for fucking 90 minutes. But the nice Why thing is... Why did they retire two guys at once? Because it, it's... I think that's just because there's there's going to be like this is going to go on for a long time and they're to do I, I think they've got to do two a year I think I think it's only fair yeah like in terms of like to get through it you need to how populate. many people do you want on this wall inevitably well once you do it for twenty years and then you have forty up maybe you start just going down to like one a year or once you're fifteen years in yeah. and you've caught up to history a little yeah they're making up for lost time. They Where is it? Name... It's, just the, it's just on the main concourse, right? I think so, yeah. It's when only they retire available the- as an NFT through Oilers Plus. <laughs> <laughs> when they retire the Bobby Nix burger, out of respect to Bob Nicholson, they should never sell hamburgers again. Vegan. <laughs> just close the close the concessions. Retire the no, no, no. Keep the concessions, but just never sell a hamburger again. Like retiring a number. You retire yeah, hamburgers. Just hang, hang a hamburger in the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> We only have hot dogs here at Rogers Place. Out of respect to Bob. Uh, before we wrap things up, got to give some love to the FIS Snowboard Big Air World Cup presented by Toyota. Coming to Edmonton on December 10th. Tickets go on sale, or they're on sale right now on Ticketmaster. Bag Milk and I will be there watching people flip around on snowboards, maybe through the seats at Commonwealth. Shout out to Explore Edmonton. I'm excited. Yep, It's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. I've never really been to like a, an extreme sports event, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for that one. Oh, it'll be cool, and you're going to see some crazy shit for sure. You're going to see some madness. I, like, I've said it before, but I went to one of these. It was in Sylvan Lake or something, and the tricks these guys do just so high in the air is incredible, and I'm super excited to watch it. I went down a rabbit hole of watching these TikToks the other day, or I shouldn't say I went oh, down a rabbit boy. hole. These TikToks keep popping up on my For You page of little kids trick-or-treating where they go up to the thing where it's like, just take one, and they take them all, and they're on the ring doorbell, but then they'll just, like, flip off the the doorbell, or they'll just, like, (laughs) grab it and, like, remove it and, like, put it down and then, like, grab the candy. It's so fucking funny. I I like the video of uh, Hunter scaring kids. I didn't see that that No. Yeah, on Halloween, he was doing that bit where he just sits real still with the candy bowl in his lap, and the kids would go up, and they'd go, bah! Oh, wow. Scared. I liked it. <laughs> Did you trick or treat, Jay? No. Uh, next year. Yeah. Oh, Jay, that uh, that picture of Crawford with the pumpkins, she Adorable. looked terrified. <laughs> You're terrified? She looked terrified. Oh, she's a little fussy. She looks oh, like legitimately adorable. scared to be around all those pumpkins. I was laughing so hard. No, Very she, adorable. She's though. loving it. She's just she just learned how to sit up, so yeah. she's really vibing it. But she was um, she was a little uncomfortable uh, at that point. So because we were putting her through the faux photography ringer, yeah. and that was the last one. How many kids did you have come to your house? I had zero again this year. 70, 70 or seven, between seventy and seventy five. Whoa, Tyler, what about you? You're a first time homeowner for Halloween, and I'm like in a neighborhood where I think there's families around. It's an older neighborhood in terms of like the houses and shit, but um I had nineteen. I was disappointed. I thought I was gonna get to like seventy or eighty. Wildly disappointing. I had zero, so I've got a lot of candy left over, which is fine for me. But I was the first time trick or treater. I was taking Wanya Jr. around. That was a different experience. How was that? Funny to watch it through his eyes, right? So like as an adult, very boring. And it seemed as though all the other parents were drinking booze, which was quite hilarious. 
But for him to like, because he's just starting to piece together how the world works. It's like, no, no, son. You just walk up to the door and demand candy from a complete stranger. And believe it or not, they're going to give it to you. And after like one house, he's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. But if this is how this works, I want to go to every house. And then he was all about it. And he's just like, uh-huh. dad, this happens every day. Yes. He's like, no, no, no. One specific day of the year you can go up and ask. Well, then the next candy. day it was kind of funny, right? Because I was like, oh, do you want some candy? He like wanted to go out again to get more. And I was like, no, no. For inexplicable reasons. We only do that once a year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a night. What a night to be a kid and get free shit, though. How yeah, many houses did he last? last? All right. <laughs> I thought my internet cut out. Yeah, yeah. what was that? I asked how, Tyler many asked ho- you, yeah. how many houses did he last? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you say that. I thought I missed something. How many houses? Oh, probably five. Yeah, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, his little legs. But he thought he was doing great. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Ooh, if you're a Nation podcast fan, listen to tomorrow's episode of Oilers Nation Radio because I believe we're going to have Harner Ryan sing on the show and we're going to give away a copy of his book. So we're going to chat some hockey with our friend Harner Ryan, give away a copy of the book, and uh, just kind of shoot the shit with him. He's a good guy. We saw him in Calgary. How about us uh, producing the podcast at the Saddle Dome after the game, Tyler? Yeah, just hang up by the media exit and wait for... uh, Famous people to stroll by. That's the way you do it. You did a show and talked to people? No, we just sat there outside where all the media people have to exit and just waited for people to come out and we bothered them. Well, not not by design. That just kind of happened. We didn't I mean know. to I do know. that. Yeah, it was a Were you like we were recording by. while you were talking? We were, we were walking by. We were leaving the building and we saw Boomer walking across the cow. I'm like, Boomer! And then we started shooting this shit with him. And all of a sudden, there was accumulation of media after that. Mm-hmm. Also right. got a Bob Stoffer uh, run in as well. As per, oh dear, as as, per, as, uh, as a tradition. Yeah. Oh dear, that was great. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna wrap this up. Short little uh, at home edition of the Real Life Podcast. Feel better, bag milk. I feel feel better, Tyler. Your M check. I'm going right back to feel bed. Better, yes, feel better, everyone. Yes. Feel better, everyone. We'll be back. I'm gonna on. go knock out a nap. Yeah. Crush feel better, Ryan Reynolds. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.